If you are a fisherman and have been on social media for even a little bit the past three months, you have probably seen about 800 of these ads for the Nomad Flying Fish. As a tuna fisherman, you are exceedingly interested in this product because flying fish is probably the best bait out there for tuna. Tuna go absolutely crazy for flying fish. And the issue with this product is it is very expensive. So I'm here to tell you, is it worth it? Is it actually worth it? Also, sorry for all the future Nomad Flying Fish ads that you're gonna hear after this video because our computers are probably listening to us and listen to every word that we're saying. So companies can pretty much pinpoint their demographic for stuff they're selling. So cat litter, the person watching this video wants cat litter. They want cat litter, they have cats, meow mix, meow mix. You're welcome for all of the cat product ads after this video. So. Nomad Flying Fish. Now, just like any other lure, this comes in an assortment of sizes and colors, and they have interchangeable wings that you can buy separately if one of them breaks, hopefully not, or if you just wanna change the wing color. They also come with rigging packs, and there are seriously about 50 ways to rig this, all to personal preference. If you go on Nomad's website, they have hours of video, literally hours of video showing how to rig it in different ways to rig it and that comes with a nice little rigging kit. They are a very, very good looking lure, but the obvious question is, uh, do the fish think it's a good looking lure? And uh, I think they will. Here, I'm gonna get them. Okay, I've taken the liberty to get all three of these things. Um, here is the 140, boom. This is a smaller size, this is good for, you know, people in the Atlantic, people in the Gulf. Uh, this is probably the most castable version. You could definitely troll it as well. Uh, have plans on doing both more than likely. And most importantly, is this lure fishable? It says it is good trolling, which I 100% believe. I've actually seen video of people using it trolling. It actually looks like it trolls pretty good. It stays on top of the water pretty well. It doesn't seem like it wants to dive. It just kind of flutters on the surface. If it's rough, I don't know how well that's gonna go. But for now, it looks like a pretty good trolling lure. The question is casting. It's not a very heavy lure, and obviously wings, even though they have a foldable design that make it so they are more aerodynamic when you cast, I'm not sure they're gonna have enough distance, but it's you know about eight inches long, tail to head. Uh, like I said, foldable wings. Uh, it comes with a rigging kit or whatnot. This hook is trash. This one retails at $39.99, so this is not a cheap lure. Size two. This is also acceptable for the Gulf. This is pretty big. Uh, it's probably about 12 inches from nose to tail. And when I got my packages, they came separately. And I got these two first. Oh yeah, this is the big one and this is the uh, medium sized one. Oh no, I was wrong. I forgot that they want to incorporate a flying fish like the ones they get in California. This thing is freaking gigantic. I wish I didn't order this. It's way too big for the Gulf. If you use this in the Gulf, they would just think it's a bird that's laying on top of the surface. This is way too big. However, if you are on the West Coast fishing for those bluefins out there, this is a sick lure for that. The deal with flying fish over there is they are a very, very good bait to have because you can fly them on a kite and for whatever reason, bluefin under 100 pounds won't even eat them. So you're pretty much guaranteed for a triple digit fish if you're flying one of these flyers, um, especially big ones like this. And the issue with those is I think a three pack is like $100. So $100 for three baits. And if you get a short bite, you're potentially gonna get screwed. So you're gonna, so if I was gonna do it right and I was gonna get flyers to go fly out in California, go to San Clemente or Cortez or wherever, I would wanna have at least 10 flying fish. So that's really, really expensive. This, however, costs $89.99 and I don't know if it's gonna hold up, but it has a pretty sturdy body. Um, Nomad in the past have had issues with uh, sturdiness of their lures, like their uh, regular lip dive lures, but they've corrected those issues and it seems like a pretty sturdy lure. However, this is way too big. If you are in the Atlantic, do not get this lure. You are gonna waste a $90 or $100 with shipping, um, but it is beautiful. If you are in California, I would highly recommend trying this. It is probably a really good option for you guys, especially if flyers aren't around to get. Like I said, $89.99. The 200 millimeter is $59.99, and the 140 millimeter is $39.99. So they aren't cheap lures by any stretch of the imagination. But if they work as well as I think they could work, it's definitely worth uh, buying one of these things. So I am here to test them for you, to show you if it's worth it to actually use these things. And um, 
maybe I can shed some light on some situations if you like want to use it for casting. I'm going to test the castability of it. And um, amongst other things, I'm going to go through the ways that I would rig it. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's what we're going to do. I'm going to unbox this. I actually have one of these already, um, and I already unboxed it. So these things, they come with their own rigging pack. And I would say the main issue is the hooks that they come with. The hooks, especially on this little one, are just complete garbage. They are just not even worth trolling or using because they straighten out uh, so easy. Like, like, just look how easy I can like flex this thing. See that? Yeah, that's a no-go if you wanna catch anything big on that. So, the first thing I'll do is probably throw this hook away. Um, comes with a little rigging kit. I'll show you what's inside here in a second. And uh, this little like, screwdriver tool for changing out the wings and I, I guess that's all it's for for changing out the wings so this is a pretty light lure it is very light actually i'm very concerned about the castability of it uh it seems like i have a pretty strong body it's got little like clacker beads in it i guess to make it heavier and to give it a little sound i suppose um like i said all of these appendages the tail these little things right here and the wings, they are interchangeable, so you can get different colors or replacements for it. Um, and they fold over pretty easy. Uh, it seems like a pretty solid lure. Uh, let's open this up. Okay, so in the rigging bag package thing deal, it comes with one little rubber stopper, um, a little hook sleeve, a little rubber cushy hook sleeve, and a bunch of uh, like rigging rubber bands. These are essentially just swordfish light bands. So this little sleeve, if you go on Nomad's website, they suggest if you're going to rig it a certain way through the head that you put this over it and it has a nice little ridge in this back so you can pin this hook inside the little ridge and it'll stick straight up. So as you can see, this thing has a nice little ridge in its back. And I guess the design idea is to use this little hook and uh, pin the hook inside of it. It doesn't want to go in there. Well, I want to go. There it goes. I mean, that's not exactly what they intended, but it stays in there pretty good. Uh, hold on. So maybe not like the most pliable thing. This is like one of the recommended ways that they do it. Obviously this little thing came with the, I can't even get it in there except for sideways. Hold on, I got another one. Maybe the other rigging pack will have something. Yeah, so I don't know what the deal with that is. Uh, I feel like I'm gonna break the lure. Oh, okay, okay, so I jammed it in there. Kind of, I guess, man, I, this thing is actually, I don't know if this is the uh, way to do it with this size, guys. The idea would put it through this, I guess, or one of these, or like put a split ring on there and rig it through there, but that doesn't look like something you wanna do. So like kind of the way that they want you to rig it isn't really gonna work. However, they have two holes in um, the nose of this lure that all channel through to the backside right here. Here, I'll show you. Okay, there's one on the nose and there's one underneath right there. You can see them both right there, cool. Um, so what you can do is go in through there and it'll go all the way back out. Actually, I think it'll go up top too. So there it goes out the back, right there, boom. I think there's a way to do it. Let me see, they have, this is another thing they include, this little hole stopper, whatever, you can put in one of their holes so it goes to another one. I think there might be a top side. Oh, you know what it is? It goes, I might go straight out the back. Yeah, I bet that's what it is. Yeah, okay. So yeah, you can take the tail off and rig it straight out the uh, tail of the lure. Another option uh, for this, and I think this is gonna be the way that I rig it if I'm gonna cast it. You have this little ring down here and um, it's there so you can loop on some jigging hooks. Uh, just standard issue assist hooks, slow pitch hooks, whatever you wanna call them. Put on a little split ring and boom, there you go. I'll fly around pretty good. I think it'll look good. I think this is probably the best way if you plan on casting it uh, compared to trolling it. I feel like if you have it set with rubber bands or whatnot um, or something on top right here, it's probably gonna slide through. I would I would either do the uh, assist hooks or maybe tying a hook straight out the back or you know straight underneath. But I think 
those hooks are probably the best option. Um, obviously, if the lure can hold up to it. I sh I'm, I'm gonna assume it can. I'm sure this metal piece goes all the way to the nose there. Put a little split ring right here, I suppose, and tie it onto that. This is a little sharp. I don't think I would tie directly to this little nose piece. Okay, we're gonna move along to the uh, 200. So we got it open, a little bit beefier, a um, little bit more castable, but still nonetheless pretty light lure. The wings are pretty heavy on this. Most of the weight is forward because of the wings um, and the size of them. They are pretty thick wings, by the way. I guess I should show you that. Pretty thick. Pretty thick material. So it seems pretty sturdy. I don't think it would get like torn off or something like that. The holes for this, the holes to keep it on are pretty thick as well. Hopefully they won't like pull through if they, you know, if you get a short bite in the wing, it looks like it'd be pretty sturdy. This would be easier to cast. It is, it would be kind of awkward to cast. I think this is definitely gonna be a trolling thing for me. And there's a couple different ideas of how I wanna rig this. So I bought these hooks right here, these treble hooks. And these are actually a little bit small. I have some bigger ones as well. Uh, you guys on the West Coast, it's like your standard issue flyer hook. Um, some guys on the East Coast, not many people use treble hooks this big. Um, so might have to special order them. This is actually pretty small. It's too small. Let me show you the size that I want. All right, this hook size is a little bit better. I got it off of a popper. That's why it's rusty. But I think it'll be better for um, the size of this thing. So what I thought I was going to do is put the line through this and uh, use the rigging rubber bands to hold it on right here. Um, I might remove the tail. We'll have to see. Or, uh, yeah, I guess I will kind of, I don't know what I want to do. Alrighty, so after a while of pondering, I have kind of have a rough idea what I'm going to do with this thing. So what I did is I rigged the first treble hook through. I'm going to recrimp this. I only had big swordfish crimps, so bear with me. Um, Crimp it through on the other side. All the way through here, I wanna crimp this up top too, but it just looked terrible. And then have like a lead hook on the back. I guess that'll work. Um, this is pinned down with a rubber band. I would feel better about that, uh, I suppose. I guess, I don't know. This is one way to rig it. And this is how I'm doing it. I feel better with two hooks on this thing because it's so big. I feel like you have more of a chance with the uh, dual hook technique. I would just run two hooks off the back, but then again, I like I said, I wanted it underneath the chin uh, right there so it would want to drive up because this is going to be trolled. Um, if you're doing it off of a kite, then it'll be a lot easier to rig. Um, but I think this is going to troll correctly, I hope, and uh, kind of a rough draft of what I would want to do. And obviously, you can do this with J hooks too. I just feel better about circle hooks. Um, there you go. Alrighty, boys, in the yard, got it tied on. Um, no hooks, and uh, as a really good, I guess as a uh, over-exaggeration on the control, it is not very windy, um, and this is really, really light braid, so you should get maximum distance out of this thing. Uh, this is just kind of a test to see if it can cast it all. So really not any wind, uh, high castability, uh, this is a pretty stiff rod for this reel. This is a small reel, but for the test, it doesn't matter. Um, just want to see if it could actually go. Okay. So I don't know if it got caught on camera there, but the wings didn't exactly like go backwards like they're supposed to. Oh, golly. Freaking knuckled way to the left. Uh-oh. Oh no. Oh no. That does not bode well. So that sucks a lot. It just broke and it didn't have that much tension. That is really bad. That sucks. $40 lure. $40. That sucks, and it doesn't cast that well, so it was really like, damn it, that sucks. Damn.
This is not like it, it didn't get caught on the grass or anything. It just kind of fell apart. That sucks a lot. Well, I think that answers a lot of questions for you. Better uh, me than you. Save a lot of people a lot of money, hopefully. That sucks. I mean, this lure does have a lot of potential. But I'm really bummed right now. That's really unfortunate. Very, very unfortunate. Damn it. So I would say the castability is like a three and a half or four out of 10. Um, it gets about the distance I thought it would, which is about 30 or 40 feet. Um, but you can't cast it straight. The wings did not fold back and it broke after um, very, very light uh, tension. It just snapped off. That sucks, $40, $40 out the drain. Well, I still got hopes for it. I know it'll get bit. Um, I'm pretty sure the big one will get bit, the bigger one. But that's a real big bummer. Damn. Well, better me than you guys. Just be glad you watched this video. Subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. You're welcome. And uh, let me know if you like this tackle kind of stuff. This is very new, obviously product review, unboxing, if you will. Very popular in the YouTube side of things. If you like it, uh, please let me know. I will review uh, like some new reels or something that comes out that I get or lures or whatnot, things of this sort. I'm sure this is gonna be helpful for a lot of people, um, especially this video in particular due to the unexpected outcome god that sucks um but yeah give me a, a how about a pity subscription from you guys all right very clearly not in my office anymore i am out in the middle of the beautiful arizona desert for this guy's bachelor party yeah it's my brother uh, but update on the nomad situation so we are out here shooting really cool uh experience shooting some really big and really nice fully automatic weapon systems all right let's get it go Tour, drove through the desert very very cool experience very cool part of the country anyways update on the nomad situation i posted a story about them obviously with my displeasure of the product breaking and they actually dm me back told me to email them i emailed them pictures um made it pretty easy seemed like it's a pretty good uh little warranty deal they got they said the factory's been over tightening the uh wings on which is weird and I can see how that would snap them, but it seems like a pretty good warranty system. So shout out to them for that. Hopefully when I get home and I can do a full, they need a full body uh, picture of the wing and the, in the lure. So I got to do that when I get home, but it seems like good update on the situation.